Yeah. You're gonna make this into a damn movie? How to build a wind tunnel. Uh, unfortunately, when we built this thing, we weren't doing... Um, I just told the guys to, you know, film stuff. I wasn't very specific. So, here is... Uh, it's been almost a year, so it's kind of dismantled and sitting. It's become a shelf for all my stuff up here. But, let's take a look at it real quick. So, this is... Uh, it's 14 by 14. Let's look at this end. So, this... Uh, it's a 14 by 14 square here. And that's the wind tunnel chamber. And here's the front of the wind tunnel. It's got that glass, or this plexiglass piece right there. And um, so that is the wind tunnel that we built. Look like that top piece is going to look like that. But all the other pieces can be square. You can keep this oh, hang one. On, hang on, hang on. What are you doing? From the outside, you can keep this one perfectly square. No. But it's going to come in that way. It's going to be completely square. But it's, since this piece is going to be angled down and coming in like this, it's going to be like that. So then you're already getting your 14 on top. You can cut it that way so it comes in here and it comes in there. So that, that piece we were designing in the first clip is right here. And what the purpose of this is, we were using this fan, which is bigger than 14 by 14. And so we had to build this adapter. And um, so the, we just cut square pieces on all the sides except for the top one was the only one that we really had to cut weird. Um, so this side is a 14 by 14 square and the other side is bigger. I think it's 18 by 18 but I'm not sure but it, that, that fit the fan and so this end, the fan would go here and then um, we put duct tape around it to hold the air in, I guess that's how you could say that, and then this went on that end, that went over there, and then shot air through the wind tunnel. Yeah. Okay, it's alright. And once it's out of the hangar, it'll blow away. Look at that! not it's about to be and a hush falls over the crowd that's gonna be the hardest piece to build you also need to, need to cut that and just completely waste a huge section of that what that. now originally we were going to set up down in the um by the straws down there a little some some sort of smoke emitter so we could watch it go over the wing um unfortunately we never did that we ended up getting Real short on funding and real short on time. So, but we did put this plexiglass or acrylic piece or whatever. I think it's acrylic. Um, put that piece in there so we could actually see the wing, and that was mostly just to make sure everything was right. Um, yeah, just so we could kind of see what was going on in there. I see Kyler cutting those uh, two by fours. Now, rather than find some fancy way to attach it, we literally just put two by fours here. And from the inside, there's a screw coming into that one. And then from the bottom, there's a screw coming up into it. And that's how we secured this whole thing together. Same thing up top there. And so throughout this whole thing, there's just two by fours every now and again on the outside to make sure we didn't restrict airflow on the inside, of course. There. Be very careful because that's not the right size bit, I think. 
Paranoid. Flash enough for me. <laughs> Paranoid Polly over there. Jesus <laughs> Mary of the good Saint Joseph. It's not even close. It needs to be dicey. Yeah, but we're gonna get some screws in here real quick. And then we'll glow it, flip it up. Okay, well, how do we know where? Oh, okay. Jesus Christ! Nope, stop, 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 no. Stop! <laughs> Jesus. Oh my gosh, nothing's gonna happen. Let me go. It's not the right size to fit. I'll use better no, job. Oh, oh my god! He's too oh, safe! Oh, 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 oh. So I've got a stop block set up here. I think the straws are the straws are seven and three quarters inch, and so I've set up my stop block here to two and what three eighths or something. I don't remember. It's one third of it. So I should be able to just cut these straws into thirds. And then we will uh, use this for the. Uh, baffle system. This is plenty. By the time the air makes it through that, it should be not spinning anymore. So these are the baffles I was talking about. And so what it is is a layer of straw, then a layer of uh, balsa wood, and then another layer of straw just over and over and over and over. And what that was supposed to do was as the fan was spinning, right, the air is coming out of the fan and spinning at the same time. And these these were supposed to take the spin out of it so you get a nice smooth airflow over the wing that goes in there. Alright, RCG, come over here. Get a, good, get a good view at our glass here. Our high quality wind tunnel. Pretty good, pretty top. Alright, so we're going to Corey, put the blowtorch down. Thank you. So we're going to turn it on, full blast, full steam. I'm gonna be real honest. It's not disappointing. Even, not even five knots. Not, let's... We have 4.5 knots exactly. Oh, five. Oh, we're kicking it up. Alright, let's put it in miles an hour. Let's we'll see what we get. Okay, we should also take this apart and see how fast it is, like right here. Okay. Well, uh, that's true. We should do that. We're getting six and seven. Probably do this, huh? Okay. Uh, looks like we're peeking out at 8.3 yeah. miles an hour. And now there's a piece of plywood sitting on top of the wind tunnel. I'm not going to take that off, but there's basically a big hole right here where this goes. And this sits down in there, and we have this hole here, and a dowel would go in, and that would attach to the um, airfoil that we were testing. And then we would set that whole thing up and take a look here. So this basically sat like this. And so this end would go, uh, be attached to the dowel and go in there. And then that would go through and be in the chamber down here with the wind on it. And then on this side, we had a, uh, another piece of wood sitting on a scale. And that way when we turn, we'd zero it out with the wind tunnel off turn the wind tunnel on and as airflow started going it started generating lift it would push up on this side push down on that side and give us a um, it, then it, we, whatever we read on the scale was how much lift it was producing um, yeah that's how we measured the lift all right so even with just those eight miles an hour we were able to get some good data because we had seven knots if we lined the thing up with the hangers as you can see there um, and that's what it looks like from the back end. You can see those baffles in there without the fan on it. Um, and then you see here the uh, duct tape holding the whole thing together and the scale and actual uh, airfoil inside that we were testing. Um, so that it, it, I mean, we, that's how we ended up getting our data. And it produced like a half a pound of lift at seven knots and it was a one foot chunk of the wing. So um, we decided that 35 miles an hour with a 30 foot wingspan it would produce uh, 450 pounds of lift. Now one thing I did want to mention too is this, um, in the trailer we were uh, brazing a piece of aluminum. And this is what it ended up being and we were, that actually wasn't part of the wind tunnel, that was just a strength test we were doing to 
do the ultralight um, wing spar and obviously I was able to do this with my knee just you know like this uh, and then hand over here but I'm holding the camera and then just bent it same thing right there so and with not very much force at all so we immediately scrapped that idea and then again immediately ran out of money before we were able to come up with anything else so that is the and <laughs> that is our entire work this is this is the only thing left of the entire ultralight project well besides that wind tunnel sitting over there uh, i can't see it whatever but so yeah we have remnants of a wind tunnel and a broken piece of junk that will never be a wing spot um so yeah 